So today I'm going to be talking about uh, very specific details on digitizing for small letters. That's a question that I get uh, asked often. So I am making sure that I'm going to go in through every little detail that I use to show you guys how you can do those very small letters on Richardson caps, not only on anything, on Richardson caps. And that are going to come out as crisp as you could possibly have them. we're going to be going into the digitizing. After we do some digitizing, then we're gonna go and see what the actual final product will look like, and we're gonna be embroidering it so you guys can see the whole way through. All right, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Let's jump into the digitizing. All right, guys, so we're gonna be using Chroma Lux, all right? This is uh, the top tier of the digitizing uh, software for Chroma. And since we're going to be doing small letters, I'm going to go ahead and get one of my favorite quotes. And that's going to be from Nelson uh, Mandela. And that's going to be, uh, let me tell you, it's going to be, it always seems impossible until it's done. And I chose this specifically because of that, because I know it always seems really impossible. But once you try it out and once you learn, uh, remember, you don't know what you don't know. So I'm about to teach you. So let's go into the uh, text tool. That's the first thing we're going to be doing. This is going to be very simple. It's going to be text. So let me go ahead and just write down the quote first. And let me make sure I am on caps. And there we go. Now, this is what I'm going to do. I'm putting the whole thing just so I can have uh, the same size for all. And basically, the first thing that I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to give this some space. Now, as you can see, all these letters, they're very close to each other. So um you can see here how the it the i and the t are very close so all i have to do here to make some of that space i'm gonna go into um my space here my space percentage now this one is going to be i'll just say let's mm, let's try 30 percent giving us some space now you're gonna see the difference there you go it's a big difference now and i know it kind of looks kind of like a lot but i'll show you exactly how it looks in just a second Let's go back to the IT. Now you can see the difference here. Now the I and the T are very spaced out. The reason why I did this is because if you have it too close to each other, you're going to, uh, okay, I'm sorry. If you have it too close to each other, you're going, you're going to um, have too many, uh, too many details. And when it's too close and on top of that, it's small, you're not going to really see uh, that that detailed so for you to be able to notice what it actually is and you can see it from farther away uh, You can see it here And now the next thing that I'm going to do is go into my um, My uh, underlay so let's go into the underlay It's gonna be right on the top here And now when I go to the underlay, I want to make sure that I take out the underlay. The reason for this is because when those letters are very thin and very small, when you're doing an underlay, sometimes uh, the thread doesn't have enough time for it to get some tension because it's, it's just so small that it kind of leaves a little loop, all right? And then if that leaves a loop, then when once the satin stitch uh, that's going to be covering uh, the actually doing the, the letters, um, you don't want that little loop to stick out and then those are very hard to take off afterwards So I'm definitely going to be and this is one of the key notes if you guys can get a pen and paper and write this down So the first one was give your letter some space and then after this is going to be take out the underlay completely All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now as you can see. I want you guys to see the difference Now all letters as you can see here it's the only underlay, it's not really an underlay, it's just a little uh, run stitch. Uh, that's just to hold down the, uh, the how do you call this, uh, the stabilizer if you have any. So, but that's not really going to be noticeable. Now you can see the difference here, this one, and then now I'm gonna go back to the, uh, the regular, how all letters come. So all letters do come with their underlay. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is after I take my underlay, and I have to say that's one of my the most important things that I do, I'm going to go over to my push and pull composition. So this is the third tip that I'm giving you guys. Pull push composition is very, very important. Why? Because when you're doing the small letters, 
they're trying to pull against each other, right? So if they're so small, you're not going to see so much of that. So you want them, you want it to seem like it's too thick for them to actually be embroidered. But once it's embroidered, you're going to see a huge difference, how they actually pull against each other and make themselves real nice and thin, okay? So for the push and pull, I'm going to go into type. Um, I'm going to press on this. And now you have two options. You have percentage or absolute. Which one do you want to use? I usually use for small letters just percentage and I will put it to a pretty high percent. So if I'm putting percentage, you're going to go over onto the value and the B option is the one you're going to be changing. All right. Usually I would put about 120 to uh, 130 uh, when I'm doing just regular push and pull compensation. Uh, that's the percentage. But since we're doing these small letters, I'm going to go all the way to 150. All right, so that's almost half its original size. All right, so I'm now going to press apply. And you're gonna see, as you just noticed right now, how thick they got. So uh, usually when you see this, you say, well, I think this is too thick. This might not look good because the M doesn't have a lot of space in here. Trust me, or, or the W, or even inside of the A. But trust me, once you embroider this, all of this are gonna just sink into each other and you're gonna see how you're gonna have enough space in, in between everything, okay? Uh, like I said, it's only because we're doing small letters. So let's go ahead and go on to the fourth tip. The fourth tip is going to be the actual uh, density that we're gonna be using. So for the density, I'm going to have it at 0.4. This is actually perfect, 0.4. You could play around with your density. Uh, now, this is a very tricky part. So if you're using a, a cap that it's uh, very structured and uh, it has uh, this kind of like uh, a garment that you can kind of like, you can see that there's uh, there's like some gradients in there and basically small letters won't work very good with those just because uh, the, the, the threads could hide in between that garment, right? So then uh, what I'm using is the Richardson 112 for this uh, just because it's one of the most difficult caps to embroider on and for one of the most difficult things to do, it's also uh, small letterings. So I'm just gonna show you, the, you know, the, the best of the best. Now, uh, when you are doing other caps that might not have that nice smooth feel like the Richardsons have, uh, you might want to play around with your density, maybe bringing it a little bit higher by bringing the number down or maybe even taking some out, all right? Sometimes you could even use some stabilizer, some topping actually to try to get those, uh, those uh, uh, threads to stick out a little more, okay? So, in this case, since I'm using the Richardson 112s, I'm going to leave my density at a 0 0.4, all right? If this doesn't work for you guys, go ahead and raise it to a 0 0.5. Uh, I, I've seen it work a lot of times, but just, just because for me, Richardson 112s work perfect with 0 0.4 density. And the next one is I like to change uh, my stitch length uh, to a 2.5. Uh, that's just optional. Sometimes it doesn't really, uh, you don't really need that to, to do this sometimes, but I prefer doing it. So uh, if you guys want to try that out, uh, it's probably going to work best. Now that I've changed my uh, font and I'm going to change my font really quickly from standard. Let me just make sure I'm still here. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to change this into a, a, uh, uh, like I said, a uh, bean. Now you could do two ply if you want to, you could try it out. I just feel like bean works best, okay? And I'm going to press the apply button. And as you can see here, it, I'm not sure if you guys are able to see it. Let me see if I can take the screen out of here. Uh, as you can see here, let me just rewind this really quickly. We went from 16,000 stitches, uh, 600, 16,600 to 17,800 stitches. So as you can see, it added some stitches in there and not only stitches, it's adding some, uh, not only satin stitches, but it's adding some of those uh, uh, run stitches as well. All right, so now obviously this is not the size we want it. So I think from this point on, I'm pretty much ready to actually put this into the size that I need it to be. So let's go ahead and do that now. First thing I'm going to do is break it apart, break up the text. And as you can see, now I have them all broken up. So I'm gonna go ahead and select 
my uh, lines. So I'm going to select this one and I'm going to right click and I'm going to group it. I'm going to do the same thing to the next line, which is going to be the impossible. All right, and I'm going to now set my um, set my style. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to put it under. I don't. I'm not really the, too worried about having it centered right now. But basically, what I want to do is just this. Oh, let me get this one. Now we're going to grab it, bring it under, and then I'm going to get a Nelson and put it under here as well. Now this one I'm just going to give it a little bit, a little bit of a gap. Uh, just so you can tell the difference now this next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna grab it all and then I'm going to uh, Use my horizontal centering and tool here on the top and I'm gonna press that so we can center them straight across here So this is exactly what I want now Let's see how many millimeters we have in just the eye here All right, look at that Exactly five. I think this is good enough. I'm gonna leave it as is now, for this design, I'm only not going to do just, just these letters. Um, I'm also just going to just add in uh, a vector file uh, just so the hat can look really nice. So let me go ahead and import my bitmap. Nelson, here we go. All right. So what I'm doing here is just putting a hoop. Um, it's okay. And there we go. So now all I have to do is get my font and since I'm going to be having a gap in the middle. That's another thing. Uh, I pretty much already uh, digitized this here. I'm not going to waste your time and showing you how to do this. We're only here for the small letters. So I pretty much already did this. I just wanted to you guys uh, to know this. Um, I'm just going to add a little line in here. Let's do, let's see. Let's do a rectangle, yes. Let's do a little one here. And then we're going to convert this into a satin stitch so let me go ahead and make sure my stitch length is going back to uh, 2.5 instead of 3.5 and now I'm going to go over to pull and push make sure you are adding your push and pull compensation uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and put this also at a 150 this is 150% on the uh, on the B value here Okay, and there we go. All right, so let's go ahead into the machine now and let's get this hat to embroider. All I'm going to do is make sure that I'm centered. I'm going to trace. And that's pretty much it. Everything looks good. I'm not gonna hit anything. So let's go ahead and press the start button. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start it off a little bit to the left and set instead. I wanted to move it just a little bit to the left. I don't want anything to be touching there. So let's do it right here. All right, right there. I gave you a lot of tips and tricks on how you can digitize for small letterings, right? Now, I didn't tell you the tips and tricks on how to actually embroider, all right? So there are some things that you have to do to get it nice embroidery, right? You don't want to have any tails. Now, I bet you guys did notice how in each and every letter, I actually had the machine trim. Now, that's not necessary for you if you don't want to, if you rather just go through it really quickly and then later on clean it up. Me personally, I like the machine to do everything for me, so I just let it trim everything and it, it, I mean, it only took like 10 or 15 minutes max, 
uh, and it was a total of like uh, I think it was 15,000 stitches so around that time now uh, there are some things like I said for you to be actually able to embroider this one of those things is that you have to use a specific uh, uh, size of thread so I'm using on this uh, machine I'm using the uh, 60 weight thread now not only that I'm also using a specific size needle I'm using the 65 by 9 size needle so those are the two main things that I recommend you to do whenever you're trying to do very small and thin letters okay on top of everything that has to do with the digitizing as well okay so now uh, if you guys want to check out I have an awesome video that I made where I made the smallest letters as possible and small letters at the bottom also Richardson as I told you guys this is a Richardson cap and all of them that I've done are on Richardson so if you guys just coming back really quickly let me grab it so we did, did this one here which is small letters as close as possible to the brim of the cap with some 3d puff and if you guys I don't think you're able to see this through the camera there but there's a little rated R very very small right in there so I don't think you're gonna get the best quality out of it right now but just trust me if you can't see it through this camera Meaning this is very, very small and it looks very, very nice. If you guys want to check that video, it's on our YouTube channel, Embroidery Hub, and take a look at that video so you guys can see how I was able to get this very, very small letterings in here and as low as possible to the brim of the cap with 3D Pub. This was an awesome video. I had a lot of fun with this one. So if you guys want to see uh, something done, go ahead and write it down in the comments below. We'll be happy to uh, try to make those videos for you. As you know, we do this every week. So please stay tuned. And make sure you follow us on Instagram. Make sure you watch my videos. You're really going to enjoy them. All right, guys. This is it for this one. I hope you guys have a very nice day.